Greetings and welcome everyone to my first impressions of MXGP, the official motocross video game. Now I am not particularly familiar with motocross, uh, not really that big, big into sports, tend to prefer video games, so it's quite surprising how actually enjoyable this game is. I've actually I've been playing it for a little while, um, only a couple about couple of hours, about three, four, five, some somewhere in that ballpark. And I've actually been really enjoying my time with it. This game is actually very interesting. It's supposed to be a more realistic sort of game, and um, yeah, I'll I'll get into that later. But for now, just know that yeah, I'm enjoying my time so far. And um, let's get on to the modes that this game supports. There's instant race, which allows you to race instantly. Uh, Grand Prix, which allows you to race in the Grand Prix stuff. Championship is basically the same. It's, uh, champion based stuff. Career is actually very interesting. You have to um, get your own little job, get contracts with different teams and then you go uh, race and ki um, try and win. And then like on the computer you've got like this social feed stuff which is, is really interesting because there's some other people who try and shit talk you and like yo what up I'm gonna beat your ass and I'm like like hell you will. And so then when it comes to the day of the race you gotta make sure that you you know, you beat that guy, and that's that's pretty cool. Um, there's also a thing where, uh, depending on the contracts that you choose, you'll have to um, get a certain amount of points, or you'll have to come in a, a number of positions, like a number of times, and that actually adds to the difficulty, which is pretty interesting. Um, there's also a nice sort of character customization thing going on here. There's not that much character customization. There's not only there's there's a it's, it's pretty limited in terms of how you can customize your character. It's not exactly the Elder Scrolls, it's not Skyrim or anything like that, you're Dark Souls. You know, it's not an RPG, so there isn't a very in-depth amount of customization here. I don't think you can actually uh, even change your gender, so I think you're stuck as a guy. So, that's that's a shame for all the female players out there, I guess. Um, you can change your name. I, I don't know how you're supposed to change it with a controller since it doesn't actually give you an option to use use it for uh, use a controller to type your name in with a uh, controller on PC anyway. I'm sure it does on Xbox 360 and PS3 and all that. But yeah, that's a bit of a shame on the PC end of the side. It would be would be nice if they gave you an option if you had the uh, Xbox 360 controller plugged in because you know people if the people are using this if people are playing with a controller they may be on the telly so they might be away from the keyboard or something like that so it can be a pain you know, having to get up and do all that but that's a minor squ squibble complaint thing so you can change your name so if you want to be called um, say hold on what's going on it's not it's not letting me edit my name. Hmm. Seems to be, for some reason, the backspace seems to have messed up on my keyboard. I can't actually, yeah, it's just, okay, never mind. Um, right, well, I seem to have messed something up there. So, normally, you can change your name, I promise you. That's, that's, that's my fault here. You can't edit, uh, change my name for some reason. But yeah, normally you can change your name. So if you wanted to be called, say, Gary Oak or something like that, you can do that. Um, you can also change your portrait. There's uh, tons of guys you can choose from, each with varying amounts of facial hair and stuff. Uh, all wear the... Nearly all of them wear the same uh, hat, though. That's odd. Um, I chose this lad because he's the cutest. Don't know who he is. But uh, yeah, I also chose to be in Australia because... Well, I'm Australian. You can also change your appearance, you can change the helmet, don't really know what sort of things these add, I think they're just basically minor variations in terms of details and stuff like that, but there's really no, no stat boost or anything like that. Like I said, this is, an R this is not an RPG. Um, you can also make it lime, you know, the words that are on your back. There's the nickname that I chose, T-Dog is up there. You can make change your racing number. Um, you can't pick all the numbers. You can't choose 95, for example. I thought that was a bit lame. Like, if you go here, like, let's scroll down all the way to 95. Look, 94, 96. I, I specifically wanted 95, and for them to skip over that is a massive slap in the face to me. Really upset by that. Uh, you can also change the style of the text and all that. I'm going to be picking style 2, because that looks 
pretty radical. Actually, quickly going to change the lime color because that's that's actually quite revolting. Let's make it aquamarine. That's very nice. Oops, went to the personal data. Let's go to the personal manager. Um, I like Irene. She looks nice. Amelia ain't too bad. I'm going to go with Irene. She looks like an upstanding lady. Um, but yeah, so we can go to the calendar and then we can start a race. So let's just do this. This is my favorite mode because, you know, there is a sort of uh, end goal here is to become the best. And so let's let's uh, check the race options real quick. You can choose the race length. Uh, you can go from from anywhere from three laps to 20 laps, which is pretty crazy. Um, there's also, you can do the qualifying uh, race, which is for your, to chain, to allow you to choose your starting position, which can be pretty useful, but I don't actually really care about that because it takes, I think, 30 minutes or something like that for the qualifiers to complete, and that is just, ah, ridiculous. Actually, you know, yeah, let's do qualify, let's do a full weekend, and let's put the AI on medium. Okay, uh, raid, riding assist, uh, I've got nothing on. I'm pro and semi-automatic transmission. But just to show you what you can do, you can put on, uh, you can change the physics to a more uh, easier sort of version because this is, game is supposed to be more realistic. Uh, pro basically means like they will be as realistic as possible. And this, and um, but if you have it on like base or whatever, it'll basically do half the work for you and you basically just have to press the buttons and it'll feel like normal so if you're new, so if you're new to the control layout that the game is using um, which it is pretty unique so you might be you might want to start off on base and then work your way up during the load screens or actually I think I think this is preload screen stuff but yeah they have this sort of stuff which is actually really neato I like that sort of real life yeah it's preload screen stuff um, so it's pretty neato how they've got that there that's, that's that's quite nice and now we're actually getting into the race which is uh, about damn time. I know, I know, I took a little while, but anyway. Uh, the, it's now starting the auto drive just to get us started, and we are in 16th position for the qualifier. Now, this is probably a good example of the sort of stuff that you'll be doing. This is a nice little practice run, though. It's, um, I believe it actually is called the practice run. Let's return to the pit. Let's look at the session info. Yeah, we're in the practice. Let's skip... Let's skip to the qualifier. Alright, there we are. Alright, I got some XP for that. You can level up. So I I said it's not an RPG, but apparently it is. Um, right, let's go. Wait, what? Hold on. Did you guys, you guys saw that there was no bike there for a split second, right? That was weird. Anyway, yeah, now we're in the actual qualifi qualifying race. And uh, we have to just try and get to the first place so we can choose which section we take place in and uh yeah so you've got to be real careful here got to be mighty careful i'm not actually very familiar with this track i'm i mostly just replay the first few tracks in a uh, time trial actually i don't think there's any sort of unlock to the tracks so um i just re replay a few certain tracks in time trials and stuff like that mostly so haven't experienced many of the maps yet now there is a now the biggest thing that this game has going for it is the fact that your left stick controls I believe the uh, bike and your right stick controls the rider so if if you move the left stick you'll move the bike but if you move the right stick you'll move the rider so that allows you to pull out pull pull some different tricks off and that's that's pretty interesting it also allows you to when turning and cornering and stuff like that redistribute your weight and so it allows you to sort of um, make your make the game more realistic because if you're like say going really fast and you're pulling back, you'll start doing a wheelie. So you'll have to put your rider weight forward, or you'll have to move the bike forward. And there's there are certain trade-offs, I believe, to choosing one over the other. Like I believe if you do put the bike down, it might make it go slower. But if you put the person forward, it sort of loses a bit more of its control. So there is some real trade-offs here. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, also, when turning around, like corners and stuff like that, you have to be real careful not to put all your weight on one side because you will fall off, as I demonstrated uh, earlier. So you got to be real careful. So you got to push on the left and push left to like move your bike over so it actually turns, but also push your like not put any weight on your rider because you know it might fall off and stuff like that. 
It's it's pretty interesting what we what sort of mechanics that sound really simple at first. You know, oh, one stick for the rider, one stick for the bike. Yeah, it's simple. It actually allows for some pretty interesting sort of methods. Like you can also do sort of scrubs in the air or whips. I think that certain ones are cool. So you can do tricks like that. Um, I haven't actually figured out any other tricks. So yeah, that's basically all I can do. Um, but yeah, you can just hold the the stick to the right and that allows you to get some pretty cool tricks done it also it's also pretty useful because it helps you get on to if you perform a scrub it allows you to get on the ground much quicker than it would than you would otherwise so you just push your weight down and yeah, stuff like that so that's pretty cool um, yeah there's a lot of very interesting stuff that can happen because of the new weight system that's introduced with the second analog stick being used now this can actually you know what, I'm going to be turning to the pit real quick. Now this can be used also in um, with a keyboard and mouse. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, but instead of saying so, whenever I say left stick and right stick, just replace. Look, there's no bike there. Where where's the bike? Developers patch that stuff because that's actually been there for a while. I keep experience that sort of stuff, and that's that's just really weird. But yeah, for keyboard users, just replace whenever I say left stick with W, A, S, and D. And whenever I say right stick, replace that with um, the directional keys or the arrow keys or the, whatever they're called. Anyway, let's go to bike setup, which allows you to change how your bike controls. You can change the preload, spring stiffness, compression dampening, and the rebound dampening. Damping, whatever. Um, it gives a brief description. Well, not really brief. It gives a description on the right side of the screen about what stuff, what um, which option does what and so there there are trade-offs for each one of course like you'll gain more stability but you'll go like slower or something like that you know that, that sort of stuff or you'll have more control but you know you'll be less you'll, you'll be more stable and won't fall off your bike as much but um, you may I don't know have other bad stuff happen to you I haven't really gone too in depth with this stuff because it sounds really really complicated and it sort of scares me um, yeah, so there's some pretty, yeah, there's in-depth stuff. So far, I haven't actually ever felt the need to use it, so that's a, I guess that's sort of a downside on the developer's side, because, you know, um, th maybe there's not enough options there, maybe it's not realistic enough. I know some people have, um, argued that this game isn't really the, as realistic as it touts on the Steam store page, because, you know, there are a lot of animations that are pre-done and you can't actually influence at all so that's a bit of a shame like I believe ow crap like I believe some of the scrub animations that you can perform sometimes are Jesus Christ are pre are canned animations so even though you may have let off the stick that it, it um, doesn't actually have an impact on it um, anyway, let's start talking about the graphics of the game first things first the game actually looks really good um, it's a very nice looking game. There is a bit of texture pop in on some of the maps. I, I forget what the map is called, but there's this one map that's at night time. And if you look at the ground, there's just tons of texture pop in. And it's just really ugly. And you can definitely tell, like, there's a, a like, a crazy amount of, like, you know, just how, it's ridiculous, like, how much better it looks up close. And then all of a sudden, when it's, like, five feet away, it looks like complete crap. So that's a bit weird but also if you are playing this game and you uh, feel a bit, little bit sluggish or it, the game doesn't feel responsive here is a re here is a way to fix that one turn off v-sync and now I know what you're thinking you're like how can v-sync impact my you know the sluggishness it shouldn't impact it that much right and well the reason why is because the developers don't actually have V-Sync in the game. Well, it's not real V-Sync. It's not actually syncing up, you know, your monitor's refresh rate to the GPU or whatever. So, uh, basically, what it does is it limits your frame rate to 30 FPS. Yeah, that it doesn't... If you have a 60 hertz monitor or a 120 hertz monitor and you have V-Sync on, it will limit the game to 30 FPS, which is just ridiculous. So... Now, if the game does feel sluggish to you, turn off V-Sync because that's what's causing it. Um, 
very ridiculous sort of thing. I don't know how they, how the developers managed to let that get past them, or how QA managed to let that get past them, because that is just ridiculous, having a broken V-Sync in the game. Um, yeah, the way to fix it and not get screen tearing is by, when you turn it off, go into like the AMD control panel or NVIDIA control panel, and then uh, find the game and select turn V-Sync on. Um, you, if you don't actually mind screen tearing or whatever, then you know, just don't even bother and just, yeah, just play the game without V-Sync on and just enjoy it, I guess. But if you do mind screen tearing, then uh, yeah, go into NVIDIA control panel or the equivalent for AMD and find MXGP and then uh, there should be an option for you to enable V-Sync in your control panel. So absolutely do that because this game at 60 FPS is great. Much, much, I, I think it goes without saying that it's much, much better than the game at 30 FPS. It's, it's a sports game, of course it is. It, it has to be played at 60 FPS. That's just like a rule of sports games. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so there is a lot of pretty cool stuff about this game, and um, there's one of my actual favorite things to do is just to chill out and play this game because it can be very calming. I know some people get re uh, um, who play this game online get really into it and get super frustrated, but I find it to be a very calming game, especially during the uh, instant races, which you know don't have that much of a bad stuff to them. Like there's no competitions with other people on social media or anything like that. Um, oh fuck, did I choose 20 laps? Oh god, this game's gonna go on forever. Christ almighty. Um, geez, 20 laps. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I found this game to be pretty calming because, you know, it's just running around the track, not running, just driving around the track for about, you know, 30 minutes or whatever. And something that's actually really cool is that, hold on, I'll just pause the game real quickly. Something that you can do is just, um, you know, just play some music, you know, just go to Steam, st go to the Steam overlay, start playing some music that you like, and uh, yeah, just um, just enjoy it. Cause you know, there's lots of music to choose from. Like I've got the uh, Sonic 06 music track, the, the Sonic 06 official soundtrack. Yeah, I have it. And yeah, if I want to start playing some music like that, then uh, so be it, I will. And I just like to have that in the background because this game actually doesn't have that much uh, music. Hold on, I need to turn that up. There we are. Yeah, this game doesn't have much music at all. I think there's one for the credits, one for the main menu, um, one for the like cutscenes and stuff like that. And I think that's about it. I think that's all the music that there is in this game. Because in game, like, there's no music, it's just ambience and stuff like that. It's just the crowd cheering you on or booing you, it's just the bike and stuff like that. I just booped the fuck out of Monticelli. Um, that was weird. <laughs> Goomba stomped him. Ah, oh, crap. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. There are some cool little options that you can do. There's, uh, there's the free camera, which is really nice, I like that. It's pretty cool, so if you want to add, like, make some fancy shots, or if you want to go look at the, uh, the audience, which are 3D low-poly models, it's not like Forza 5, where they're 2D cutouts, Mortal Kombat style, so that's a point in this game's favour. But yeah, so if you want to say, like, rotate it, have a nice little picture like that, let's put it, put it a little bit higher like that, hold on, there, 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 oh, no, there we are, that looks, that looks, that looks great. That looks brilliant. Don't you agree? I agree. Alright. Now, how do I screenshot this? Uh, F11. No? F11. Ah. There we are. It was, uh, I forgot, because I'm in big picture mode. It's not actually F11. It's uh, the, the uh, home button plus right trigger. Right, how do I... Uh, yeah, okay. Right, uh, you can also go into the options, change some of this stuff in video. So if you want to say, turn off all the uh, little indicators on the HUD and all that, you can do that. If you want to mess about with a gamma correction, you can do that as well. Audio, lots of audio options, very nice. Uh, third person camera, I have it set all the way in, but because I think that looks really cool and like cinematic and shit like that. But you can also 
re adjust that so that's pretty nice so if you want to have it to have it further out you can totally do that so yeah here it is here it is with the camera further out and with all the little riding assists turned off it's a uh, it's very nice looking very nice looking indeed it also looks super cool with all the HUD stuff turned off very nice looking game there we are yeah I can imagine this being oh man just imagine like a sort of first person mod for this with oculus rift wouldn't that be cool oh man right I'm probably not going to finish this race because it's 20 laps long and I don't want this first impressions to go on for about 70 years so I think I'm gonna start wrapping it up um, first off let me just uh, turn the music off there we are and um, yeah thanks for watching everyone I hope you enjoyed my first impressions of OW MXGP the official motocross video game uh, you can purchase it on Steam right now for about like what 30 bucks 40 bucks something like that um, yeah it's a pretty good game pretty good game so I do recommend you pick it up if you're into the sort of MXGP sort of stuff um, oh do be do be careful though because apparently some people are failing to launch the game at all like some people in the Steam forums have been reporting tons of issues with launching the game and getting it to work and just not running well um, if you do have that problem when you buy the game I do suggest you send a ticket to the Steam uh, support and tell them of your problem and say like you know other people have also been getting this so hey I'm not scamming you and they will give you a refund so don't worry too much about that it, you know but it is something to worry about if so yeah I'm uh, I'm not having any problems like that though so I can't offer any solutions aside from if you do have it just get try and get a refund yeah because as you can see I am actually playing the game so it is it is working for me um, yeah anyway thanks for sticking around everyone I hope you enjoyed my first impressions of MXGP and GG